right, we're doing financial documents tonight. All right, so here is our first financial document. It is an invoice, okay? Um, this is for a panel beating shop. I hope you guys can see the document on your screen there. I haven't showed you the whole thing. I've just shown you a part because it's quite big, but I've enlarged it so you can see all the text. Just shout if you're having problems seeing it. Um, it's a panel beater shop and they've invoiced a person for work done on their car. So they invoiced to this person here, Denike Gabela. All right. And he's in Richards Bay. It's near me. And this is the invoice number here on the left, invoice number 100.1. .1. It's for January the 18th, 2019, as we can see here. So I'm just looking at all the information on this invoice because you've got to familiarize yourself with what's on here. They could ask anything. All right. And there's a lot of easy questions that usually come with these statements that they put in these invoices and statements they put in there. So a lot of easy questions. So you've got to familiarize yourself with all the information that's there. Have a quick glance through it before you start looking at the questions. Okay. So we've got a date there. We've got a customer ID. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then down here, these are the items and the description. We've got rear bumper painting, rear fender painting, panel rear line, dent repairs, coin size dent repairs, and dent repairs that are up to an A4 size. Okay, so those are all the items, all the items of work that they did. And then in on the right-hand side here, we've got the hours column, and they did most of the work, looks like on these two, three hours each on those items, two and a half on the first one, and then these last ones look like smaller items over there. The rate, okay, now I think this might be an hourly rate, okay? I don't think it's per item. So I think this might be an hourly rate, but we'll check on that later on. We can easily check on that. <clears throat> We've got all the rates here in the middle column. And then we have all the amounts for all these different items in this invoice. Okay, let's go further down and see what we got. All right, we've got a subtotal there. All right, and then we've got VAT. They're telling us that the VAT is 15% in that line and then we've got a total for that and then if i go down whoops that's not down we've got another it could be like where you put a you could show a discount there and then we have the total that is owed over there all right and then on the left hand side we have a due date for this invoice they want this money by that date and they are warning over here 5% interest will be charged on late payments. So if you're late, they will add 5% interest. Okay. And please call James if you have a query. All right, we're not going to call James tonight. But let's have a look at the questions. So that's the invoice. And here come the questions. All right, shout guys, if you can't see properly, I uh, hope the text is big enough for you to see. There's 3.1. Give one service that was rendered to Mr. Gabela. Give one service that was rendered to Mr. Gabela. Does total include VAT or not? Good question. Good question. Yabawadi. Yabawadi. All right. Good question. Is total, the question is, is total including VAT or not including VAT? So I'm talking about this total here. Does it include VAT or does it not include VAT? So the subtotal is usually... Uh, for all the items that are covered in the invoice, all right? So this subtotal comes from all those items there. Then they're going to add VAT on, and they're just showing you what the VAT is here in this line, and they add VAT on, and so your total should, yes, include the VAT, okay? If this company is VAT registered, they will include VAT on their invoices. All right, not many companies aren't VAT registered. Most are, so they should be all including VAT and showing it in a final total. So the final total at the bottom here, yes, should include that. Good question, because they might ask us something about that later. Let's see. All right. So give one item that was charged. Easy, straight up question. Can anybody see it or give information from this invoice? What items were charged? Let's read the question again. Give one service that was rendered. Give one service that was rendered. So Mr. Khabela, 
Anybody? Somebody. Somebody. Anybody. Anybody. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Rear fender. Okay, rear fender painting. All right, make sure you write the whole thing. If you write it in the exam, rear fender painting is one service that was rendered. Whoops. Okay, so that is a service that was rendered to this person and he got charged for that service. Yes, rear fender painting. We got guys at rear pump, bumper painting. So they, they're saying uh, name. In fact, the question should have said name. They said that use the word give here. All right, it's a very boring way to state the question. They should say name or state. But name would be a better one. Name one service that was rendered to Mr. Khabela. So these are all the, the things that was uh, done for him on his car, and he got charged for them. So any one of these five is a service that was rendered to him. All right, the word rendered, um, given to him. All right, offered to him. All right, the service that was offered to Mr. Khabela based on this invoice here. Okay. All right, so name one service that was rendered. Any of these five services that this company does, like painting a bumper, realigning a panel, repairing a dent, those are all services that this company offers. So the question is saying name one or give one that was rendered to Mr. Khabela or given to Mr. Khabela. All right. So if you if you look at any of these five yeah and name one of those or give one of those, you'll get your two marks. Remember, Matt, let's just see there's never one mark. All questions are two or, or above. So that's an easy two marks. Yes. Yeah, so realigning, painting, dent repairs, any one of these five. If you just write that down, you'll get your two marks there. Easy, easy money. Okay. Question 3.2 at the bottom. What is the due date for the payment? Oh, another easy two marks. I wish you get this kind of question. Yes, everyone's saying 31st of January, 2019. That is the due date for the payment. He has to pay by that day. All right. If he doesn't, interest. Interest gets charged. All right. If he doesn't, interest gets charged. So that is a due date that he's got to keep to. All right. Well done. Guys, easy marks. Easy, easy marks. All right. Come on now. Where's the meaty stuff? Where's the meat? 3.3. Mr. Khabela was unable to pay on the due date. Oh, calculate the total amount he was charged. All right, now let's think about this question now. He's unable to pay on the due date. Calculate the amount that he was charged. So what they're talking about here must be this line, okay? Which says, if you don't pay by that due date, 5% interest charged on a late payment. In other words, if you don't pay, pay by that day, this total here is going to get 5% interest on it. All right. So, Mr. Khabela was able, unable to pay by the due date. Calculate the total amount he was charged. All right. They're not saying state the amount he was charged. You're not just going to rewrite this number. You've got to calculate something. Calculate the total amount he was charged. So, they're talking about this 5% interest charge for being late. So we've got to include that now on the total that he already owes. We've got to include that. So who can tell me how, what we're going to do here? Ah, Vaughn Gaon has got an answer there. All right, he's saying take the total and multiply it by the interest. All right, multiply it by the interest, not the VAT, the interest of 5%. Yeah, you say VAT because you've, you've got 15% there and 5% here, yeah, so it looks quite similar. So this interest must be added on to this. Now, guys, I taught you such an easy way to do this. All right, who's got answers for me? Multiply the interest so you don't divide. Mm, no, we don't divide. How do you work out what is this value here plus 5% interest added on? What's the new total? If you take this value, 749366, and add on 5% interest. What's the new total? How would you guys do it? Bianca. We have Bianca's hand up. Bianca, just look for a message on your screen that is gonna ask you to unmute. 
Hi, sir. Hi, Bianca. How are you? Uh, not quite you. Hi, sir. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, it must be the network. Oh, network. Uh, sorry, Bianca. Sorry, man. Oh, yeah, this internet. My thing. network is poor. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry, man. Sorry about that. Um, we have Katleho. Katleho. Was it Bonga? Sir. Okay. Uh, Bonga, just hold on a second. Are you going to help me with the second one? All right. Hold on a second there. Eh? Okay. No problem. Okay. Katleho? Yes. What would you yes, do? Yes, sir. Uh, so I took the total amount of the seven thousand four hundred ninety-three and sixty-six cents. Yeah, what did you do with it? I multiply it with the five percent, and then it gave me three hundred and seventy-eight and sixty-eight cents. Okay. And then I added on on that seven thousand four hundred ninety um, 93 and 66 cents it gave me the total amount was 7868 and 34 cents all right very good that's perfect that's perfect just stay on the line stay on the line i just want to see um if we get the same answer yes yeah? so i'm just going to write it out for you and then you just check check my answer okay so three seven four six eight three three seven four six eight three and then you said you added that to the 7493.66. So you said, I'm just going to write it all out. So you said, take the 7493 and add it to this now. I'm running out of space here, 683. And you said you got a total 7868343. Seven eight six eight three four three, four, and then three. you rounded that off to seven eight six eight point three four. Is that what you got? Yes, sir. Excellent. Well done. Very, very good, Kotlejo. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, that's perfect. Yeah. So that's taking the five percent and adding it onto the total. All right. Now. Uh, good question. So they want to know, so this charge here, if we look at this charge here at the bottom, 7493,66, what must we do with that? Well, they're saying, that's how much you owe us. But if you make a late payment, late payment now, we're going to charge interest on that. So we're going to add an amount onto that, which is 5% of that value. All right. So we're taking 5% of that total, th excuse me, there which gives us 374 rand. And then we're going to add that 374 rand onto this total because the longer you don't pay, you know, it's almost like you're taking a loan. You owe someone money over time. That's like a loan and all loans incur interest. So you, the longer you owe us, the more interest will get added on and added on and added on. So you add that 5% uh, of the total onto it there. All right. Now I want to ask, did anyone else do it differently? Yes, well done. Did anyone else do it differently? Who would like to raise their hand and tell me if they did it in a different way? Because we covered percentage calculations at the beginning of the year. And I was hoping someone would have done a different way. But it's okay. This method works absolutely fine. It, it's foolproof. All right. Let me show you another way to do this. So if you take this total here. All right, watch here, so okay, let's, see, let's see if you did the same thing. So if you take this total here and you use the method that I taught you by multiplying by one comma, all right? Now the 5% here, which is exp I've expressed it as a fraction, this can also be expressed as a decimal, right? 0 0.05, all right? I put that here on this decimal number. So the zero 05 here, which is my 5%, I put it over here and multiply, all right? This gives me, watch. 
So 7493.66 times 1.05. Oh, I've done something wrong. Uh, the number's wrong. <clears throat> 7.4. There we go. 7868.343. I get exactly the same number. Okay. So this method also works. We, we spoke about this at the beginning of the year. Now, if you're looking at this thinking, oh no, what's this guy on about now? Do we really have to do this? You don't. It's just another way to do it. All right. It's a little bit quicker um, and it gets your answer. So this is taking a value and adding on a percentage to that value. All right. So you guys, this method here that Katlejo spoke about, absolutely perfect. Works every time. Works like a charm. But this method at the bottom is also another way to do it. All right. To, to take a value, add on a percentage to that value for a new total. All right. So there's two ways. Yeah. So maybe some people forgot to add on at the end. Um, if the question was, how much is 5% interest on that total? How much is the interest? Then you would just be left with this 374. But they want to know what is the new total? All right, so what is the new total that needs to be paid? you got to add it on to find the new total. Okay, all right, meaty question. All right, we're getting into the meat of it. I love it. Okay, so question 3.4. Um, um, yeah, so delay it can. It's just another way to do it. You can you choose. And by the way, you don't have to use this method. You choose what you are comfortable with. If you're comfortable with Katlejo's method, and she's probably been taught that for a year or two now, that's fine. Stick with what you're comfortable with. But there is another way to do it. I'm showing you, and you have different options. 3.4. Show how the total VAT amount of 977.43 was calculated. So they're saying, we see that the VAT amount here, 977.43 has been calculated. Show how they got it. All right, so you got to get the same answer. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, body, yes, same mark allocation. All right, how did they get this 977.43? How did they get it? Now, when you do this and you show about calculation, you're going to show about calculation, you have to get the same answer. Okay, just remember that. You got to get the same thing. All right, what do I do? Who can tell me? Where's um uh one gun? Are you there? You try to help us with the previous question. You there? Yes, I'm there, sir. All right, do you want to try this one? Uh, yeah, let me try. Okay, excellent. So the question is the total of the total VAT amount of 977 and 43 cents on the invoice. How was this calculated? Show how it was calculated. I think they use it VAT, VAT exclusive. Yeah, so what would you do? Walk me through it. It's 100 over 115. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Do you multiply by that fraction? Yes, you do. Okay, let me try it out here. So 6516, we're taking the subtotal now. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and you multiply by, you said 100 over? 115. 115. Very yes. interesting. Okay, let's do it quickly on the calculator. We should get the same value, 97743. So 6516.23 multiplied by 100 over 115. Oh, I must have done something wrong. I'm getting a huge number here. Oh, it's taking it off. Ah, uh, this, this calculation is taking the 977 off. You see that? So our 6516 has dropped yes. to 5666. Five so this is, I think you're talking about when we want to work out what was the value before that you could use something like this. Okay. So I think what you could do is swap around. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, you see. So if we, I think let's swap around. Uh, let's swap around. Yeah. In fact, yeah, let's put the 15 yeah. on the top. Yeah, and 100 at the bottom. You happy with that? Yes, sir. Okay. I get them the yeah, so that fraction was a little bit different. So it's 15 over 100. So that's multiplying by 15%. So that's right. Thanks, Bonang. 
All right, so 9774345. And we're rounding that off. You guys have already done it in your head, so 977.43. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, thanks. Bonang, excellent. Thank you for your help, eh? Yes, sir. Uh, Busa Siwe, you there? You have a question? Check your screen there. You'll see a little. Uh, yes, Busa. How are you? Hi, sir. Hi, you're right. I'm okay, sir. And you? Good, man. What What did you do? Uh, sir, I did the very same thing, sir. Excellent. All right. So you multiply yeah. by 15 over 100. Yes, sir. Excellent. Well done. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. All right, guys. So that's just, this is just uh, take 15% of that subtotal and show it. All right. This is not take 15% and add it on. This is just take 15% and show us what it is. So the question states, uh, let's read the question again. Show how the, that amount of 97743 was calculated. So we showed it and we get the same value. You'll get all your marks for that. Um, no, you don't minus the subtotal. Uh, in this case here, we're just taking the subtotal, working out 15% of it, all right, which is here, 15% of the subtotal, and just showing it. All right, we're not going to add it on or minus. We're just showing what 15% of the subtotal is because that is, is calculated like as they say, take whatever your subtotal is, all right, which is this value here. If I scroll up in the invoice, it's this value here next to subtotal 651623. We need to add 15% of that on. And, and then in this line here, they're showing you what the VAT amount is because legally you have to show how much the VAT is. You can't just go from the subtotal to the final total without showing how much VAT you actually paid. All right. So you have to show on an invoice how much VAT was paid. All right, so that's what the question is saying. Show how they got this 97743. How did they do it? And this is, we showed exactly how they did it. Okay. All right. Nice. Let's go on to question 3.5. We're getting interesting now. It says there, if Mr. Kabela had paid before the due date, so he didn't, he wasn't late, he paid before, the dealer was actually going to give him a 7% discount on the amount that excludes VAT. All right. So if he pays before the due date, the dealers will say, Laka, I'll give you a discount on the amount excluding the VAT. Now, what amount is that? We've got to find that. Which amount is excluding the VAT? That's this one here, isn't it? That is the subtotal there. That is the amount that excludes VAT. This amount at the bottom is the amount that includes VAT. All right. So the VAT's excluded amount is this top one here. So the, the owner of the company is saying, if you pay um, before the due date, I'll take this, what you owe us, take 7% off before we even charge you VAT. And then we'll work out a new subtotal. All right. Okay, yes, good. So the next, here comes the question. So there's a statement. Here comes the question. Calculate the dis discount given on the amount excluding VAT. So what they're saying, what will that discount be? How much would that discount be? Remember, it's 7%. Okay, I'll write you on the screen. 7% discount on this subtotal. So how much is that? Was it 8%? No, 7%. All right. So it's a 7% discount on this total, which is the VAT excluded total. Okay. So how much would that be? You guys should be calculating. You should be working on your paper or your calculators there. I'll give you a minute or two to get a value. <clears throat> and then someone can tell me how we're going to work this out. All right, there's Pete there with a, a value already. You just do your own work there and get an answer. We're going to all check our answer. Peter just showing us um, the calculation has been done. 
All right, Lauren's confirming the previous value. Abiwes also looks like it's got the same value. All right, good. All right, who would like to help me and tell me how we do this one? All right, Sandili is confirming. Any one of those guys who have given Pete? All right, hold on a second. How are you? Hello. How, hello, how are you? I'm good in you, sir. I'm good. All right, how did you do it? Tell us. Um, I took the and subtotal and I multiplied it by 7 over 100. Excellent. All right, you multiplied it by 7 over 100, which is 7%. And I'm just going to do it in the calculator here and just check and confirm with you. So 6516.23 times, uh, oopsie. 6516.23 multiplied by, and there's the fraction, 7 over 100. And there we go. Yes, well done. So 456.1361, I'm going to write that all out. So 456.1361. Six one. Now, Petty, how do you round this off? What does it become? Um, I'm not sure, but I think it becomes four, five, six, and then I think is a twenty that, or one three. Okay, so now that one three, look at it there. If you can see on the screen, I've underlined the three in red. We always round off to the second decimal, so that three is the one we must focus on. Will that three change because of the six that's behind it? Yes. Yes. So it'll become four, five, six, comma, one, four. Four. All right. Okay. So round it off to two decimal places. Always rounding off to two decimal places. Peter, thank you so much. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. There we go. So that is um, seven percent. So this is this is what the discount would be. So the owner of the company is saying, if you had paid before the due date, you would have got this kind of discount. This is how much your discount would be. All right. Okay. It looks like Amanda has a question. Amanda, just check your screen there. You should see a little... A little... Um, Ace, how are you? Ace, how are you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, just turn your volume down a bit if you can. Oh, hello. There we go. Hi, can you hear me still? Yes, I can. All right. Yes. What's your question? Um, I wanted to ask if we had divided, if we had put the hundred underneath the subtotal instead of the instead of the seven percent, is that is that still correct? Yeah, the answer still, is still the same. Yeah, it should still work. Let's try. So, so it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Different teachers teach different methods. It's mm -hmm. mathematically still the same thing. Okay, so if I do it like mm -hmm. that, it still gives me the same answer. Mathematically speaking, it's still the same thing. We don't have to worry about why mathematically. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. If the teacher has taught you this method and it works for you, that's fine. Yes. Use it. Okay? It, okay, but mathematically, it means exactly the same thing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right, good question. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's see what the next question is. We're making good progress here. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but so far this question is a lot of percentage calculations. 3.5.2, state. Hmm, it doesn't say calculate, it just says state. State whether the discount will affect the amount of VAT and justify your answer. Now, usually in a, excuse me, in a question like this, justifying your answer means doing some calculations to prove it. All right, so you, we should, in math literacy, always justify our answer with a calculation. So who can tell me, state whether the discount that we've seen now will affect the amount of VAT. So let's go back up to the invoice. Okay, here's the invoice. The owner's saying, if you pay before the normal time, you'll get a 7% discount. We know how much that is, all right? So this subtotal here will reduce it by 7% by this amount, okay? Will that affect the VAT, which is down here? Will that affect the VAT? Who would like to tell me? Who would like to tell me? Will it, number one, 
will it? You've got to say yes or no, and then justify. Ah, your body. You say yes. Now, justify. You've got to justify your answer. You can't just say yes. If this is a, a three mark question, you got one out of three. If it's a two mark question, you got one out of two. You only got half the question so far. Why does it affect the VAT? The answer will change. Yes, the answer will change. Good. Okay, so we can use a calculation to prove this. It's always good practice to use calculations to prove this. So what we'll do is I'm going to make space. I'm going to remove question three. That's too much space. Let's remove question three. And you guys think about it, how to justify this. All right, what could we do to prove this point? Because if you say yes or no, and you don't justify, you're losing some precious marks there. I'm going to remove all of this. Okay. Yeah, the VAT inclusive will change. All right. Why? Well, let's take a, let's take the normal calculation. Six five one six comma two three. All right, and we're going to calculate VATs, which is over a hundred, and this would give us. We've done it before. This is why they asked this question. They said, show how this is calculated. So that's how it's calculated, right? That's how to work out the VAT on the subtotal. But a discount, this discount here that I've highlighted in blue would decrease this value, won't it? In fact, I could show that, all right? So what I could do is say, this is how the discount decreases this value. You take that value, and you subtract the discount. Okay. Now you could press it on the calculator and get an answer if you want. I'm just rewriting that statement above. Very similar. Here's the original VAT calculation, but here's the, the amount now without, with the discount removed. So you could show by calculation, look, if you change the 651623, what's going to happen? All right, uh, and someone already had a value there. So let's check. So they've, I'm gonna write it above here. Uh, 6060,09. So they're saying this would be 6060,09. That would be the new subtotal. How would that change the answer? Let's have a look. Right, I'm gonna put the whole thing in. Oh, you guys know me, I love brackets. So 65. 16.23, and I'm going to take away the discount, 456.14. All right, you guys might press it on the calculator and get 606.09, that's fine. I'm just going to type it in there with a bracket, and then I'm going to calculate my VAT on this, 100, and see what we get. Ah, 909, and we saw someone already with that answer. Very good, guys, well done. 909.0135, all right. 909,1305. So 909,13013. My bad. 01. All right. So that's the new value. Okay. So why does applying the discount change the VAT? Because this subtotal here will change to a new subtotal and we can show that by calculation so these two lines show the difference all right so you could use this to justify your answer all right write something out like that so the person that's marking seeing is saying yeah they can they understand what's going on yeah the subtotal is changing that's why the vat amount will change all right very good you guys are on the ball tonight okay let's go to the next question who should be contacted for any queries? Oh my gosh, we're not going to answer that. You just go and find out there. It says there, James, contact James 082 555 Oh, it's an easy two marks. We're not going to look at that one. Let's have a look here. Question three, five, four. Calculate the rate per hour for rear bumper painting. The rate per hour for rear bumper painting. So let's go up to our invoice here. Going to erase some of this information that's distracting us. Over here under description, 
rear bumper painting is the first one there. Okay, they did two and a half hours of rear bumper painting. There is a rate there of 750. So what is the question saying? Calculate the rate per hour for rear bumper painting. Oh, well, maybe they want us to confirm that it is 750 an hour. I think that's the, that's the rate, but let's check. So this is the hours, <clears throat> all right? This is the hours, two and a half. And this is the amount that was charged for those two and a half hours. So we can work out how much was charged per hour. How much are they charging per hour? Yes, there is a value in the middle. Guys, don't just write that out for three marks. Hey? You've got to calculate it. How do they get this? How do we work out the rate? Zandile's tried already. He's got seeing so it's 300. Whoa, how did you do that, Zandile? How do we do this, guys? How do we work out the hourly rate? It, it's two and a half hours of work. This is the, the total for two and a half hours of work. How do I get how much was charged per hour? What do I do? Anyone have an idea? Hello, sir. Hey, Katleho, how are you? I'm good, and you, sir? Good. What should I do? Um, you're going to take the amount, the total amount, and divide it by the hours. Very good. We want a per hour rate. They've, yes. done, two and, they've done two and a half. So you say take the total and cut this up into two and a half, which is 2,5, yes. eh? Yes. All right. So cut it up into two comma five. So one eight seven five divided by two point five. Ah. It will give you the seven fifty. It'll give you the seven fifty. So yes, seven fifty is the hourly rate. Now, thank you very much, Katleho. Good job. Thank you, sir. All right. So it's seven fifty. Okay. You see that? So we took the total for all the work that they did, which was two and a half hours worth of work. And we did, and we divided the one eight seven five by two and a half hours. Yes, you guys are getting it. Total charge by one hour. Very good. You guys are getting it. Well done, Emmanuel. I see you there. I see you, Emmanuel. Good to see you there. All right. So seven fifty rand, but we haven't finished yet. Kia's probably screaming on the other side there. I think <laughs> what I said seven fifty per hour because a rate. always has this symbol, the per symbol, right? So that's 750 per hour. All right, so that's a rate. Okay. So they're saying, let's read the question again. Did we answer it? Calculate the rate per hour? Yes, we got the rate per hour. Guys, if you, if you, if you think that writing this down, it, it, you know, that is a rate. If you write that down, when the instruction is calculate, for three marks, please don't expect them to give you all three marks. Okay. If they say state the rate for two marks, then it's just getting the information and bringing it down. But calculate the rate for three marks. If you just write 750, you're not going to get all three marks. Okay. You've got to do some work for that. All right. So we just take the total and divide it by two and a half hours. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's see. Show how the amount of 651623 was calculated. Oh, guys, come on. I love this question. I hope you get this question or something like this. How was this subtotal calculated? Everyone should be typing into chat. How did they get the subtotal? Everyone in chat. Yes, I know you know the answer. All right, add all the add them all up. Yes, good. You guys are getting it. I know you know. To get the subtotal, you add them all up. All right, I'm not going to write it down. I'm going to do it on my calculator only, just to check. So one eight seven five plus two two five zero plus one six eight zero plus two eight four point four nine plus four two six point seven four. There we go. All right. So. You have to, if you're going to write this out as an answer, you're going to have to add all those numbers up to get 6516 and 23 cents. Yes, good. You, you guys know what to do. All right. Yo, oh, guys, I hope you get this question in the exam or something like this. It's been a good one. Lots of easy marks here. All right. Well done. Let's have a look at a new question. You know me, hey? 
the further we go down the hole, the more interesting it gets. All right, come on now. Oh, all right, bear with me for a second. I've got to restart the engine, yeah. All right, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. It's restarting the engine. There we go. All right. Okay, here's the new question. All right, let's see. It says, I hope you can read this, guys. There's a lot of text in here. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. All right, I'll zoom in for now. Let's see. It says here, CHS Network Installations was, con was contracted by Vector High School to install and manage their network systems. Table one below shows the installation statement for April 2019. So this is a statement of work that was done. Oh, it's a company, oh, it's a bank statement, there we go. All right, tell what shows the installation, the installation statement. CHS network installation was contracted by Victor Hospital installed the management inferences. So table below shows the installation statement. So table one, CHS network installation table ever. BSV bank. It does look like a bank account. It does look like a bank, a bank statement. But the text over here is quite uh, confusing because install and manage their network. There was work done and the table below is supposed to show the installation statement. All right, let's have a look. So, uh, so this is what I was thinking. This is just a statement of um, work that's carried out but this is obviously just the school's or the company's bank statement that's what that's what it is so the text at the top is a little bit contradictory but anyway it looks like yeah it is accounting it looks like a bank statement all right let's just treat it because we've got transactions we've got a balance on the right hand side so it, it's like a bank statement okay <clears throat> all right well let's treat it like a bank statement um okay let's have a look so we've got for a period, this, this is the period here. This is for how long this statement is for. And we've got over here, 1st of April to 30th of April. So it's for the month of April. All right, there's uh, personal information over here, which you don't really have to worry about. Um, and then these are all the descriptions and the items under the descriptions. We've got all the dates here, left-hand column. We've got transactions here, what was happening, and then how that affected the bank balance on the right. Okay, balance brought forward. First item on the list, what is that? What is balance brought forward? All you accounting and EMS fundies, help us understand what does balance brought forward mean? Who'd like to help us understand this? You guys, I know there's accounting people here. Help explain to those that don't do accounting, what does balance brought forward mean? Anyone out there? All right, let me let me help you out. So balance brought forward, this total here, the first one, is the total that comes from the previous month's end of the statement. So you can see down here at the bottom, at the end of the statement, let's say balance carried forward. This will go into the next month of May. All right, so this first line comes from March's statement. The end of March's statement had that total. So that's carried down now into this new statement for April. So that's the previous month's end balance. Okay, yeah, the guys are, are typing it down, all these EMS and accounting students. All right, so that's the balance from the previous month. And then we have one item here. We're not gonna look at all of them. We're gonna look at one item here, credit interest. Okay, credit interest. So. There is a total sitting in the bank. And because there's a total there, it's, it's building up interest. All right, interest is being given to add on to this total. Okay, and we can see that interest is added on because the total has changed now from 185,960 to 186,027. So this interest portion has been added on. All right, I'm not gonna go through all the other ones, but I think you understand how this works. So these transactions will, um, change 
the totals as we go. All right. Uh, yeah, let's not even use the word journal. All right, I'm scared to even use accounting terms. Let's let's do two two one here. It says write down the balance excluding interest that was brought forward on the last day of the previous month. So you would just need to write down one eight five nine sixty. Write down, no calculation. Two marks, just write that down. One eight five nine sixty. Let's look at one more question here. Calculate the interest rate that was used on the balance brought forward to obtain the credit interest. So they're saying. What was the interest rate that was used here? And they say, you may use the following formula to do this. The annual interest rate can be calculated by taking the credit interest, times it by 365, dividing by the balance brought forward, and then multiplying by 100%. All right, Bukhle, you got a question? I think the hand's gone away. So what we're going to do is use their formula, okay, and just substitute all the values in. So I'm going to do it on the right-hand side here. I'm going to say AIR for annual interest rate, okay, is the credit interest. Where's the credit interest? Look here at the top. That's the credit interest, okay. So we're going to take the credit interest, which is 67 Rand, 25. And we need to multiply that by 365 and then divide by the balance brought forward. Where's the balance brought forward? Here it is there right at the top. They mentioned in the previous question. So 185960. Okay, and then we've got to multiply this by 100%. Now, there's something. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to talk to you very quickly about this. Okay. So let's just put this all into the uh, calculator. Times 365 and 185960. And then I multiply by 100. Now, look at my screen and look at the formula that they gave me. What is different? Quickly, someone tell me what is different to what's on my screen to the formula that's written that they gave me. What is different? What can you notice is different? Yes, Akila, good job. What's different to my calculation on the calculator and what's written down here and is given to me in the question? What, what do you guys notice is different? Uh, okay, the commas, yes. All right, there are two, I'll, I'll put it in. I'll put the two zeros in. Yes, that's the, that's the one I wanted to bring to your attention. I'll put the, uh, the zeros in. That's what I want to bring to your attention. Now, I've left the percent sign off on purpose. Okay, because you know, look at the calculator. You know when you calculate a percentage, there's a fraction and then you times by 100, right? If I say, what is um, a half written as a percentage? You guys will just say, times by 100. Am I right? Do you do you ever write times by 100%? No. It gets you a percent. The answer is a percent. But you've never, ever, ever typed in onto your calculator a percentage sign there. For example, we'll come back to this one here. Okay, I'm going to press equals, and then we'll come back to this one. I want to do a new one. Let's, let's, let's do a fraction. Let's say, what is 1 over 2 as a percentage? You guys would say, sir, just times by 100. That should give me 50%, right? Yeah, 50. Now watch. What if I put in a percent sign here? I hope this will give me the same answer. No, it doesn't. Do you see that? If you put in a percent sign, if you type that percent sign in, it's going to give you the wrong answer here. We've never learned to write a percent sign in our calculators when you're working out a percentage. We just say times by 100. <clears throat> so be careful. Now, it, often in exams, they write that. Let's look at the question. You see down here, they say times 100%. Okay. That's just the examiner saying this is a percentage calculation. So this little percent sign here is the examiner saying it's a percentage calculation. Please don't put that into your calculator when you, when you work out a percentage. Okay. So there's our value on the calculator there. So it's 13, comma, 19974. 13, comma, 19974. 
and we want to round off to two decimal places always unless they tell us otherwise we're always doing two unless told otherwise that's going to be 13.2 percent okay so be careful there <clears throat> when they write the percent don't put it in your calculator be careful please <clears throat> 